Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. Today, I'm going to be talking about MSI's second attempt at fixing QD OLED panel dimming, their new EOTF Boost HDR mode. I first got a look at this mode in the new MAG 272QP QD OLED X50, the 1440p 500Hz monitor releasing this month, but MSI tell me this mode is coming to other OLED displays soon. Because of this, I thought it would be a good idea to revisit the EOTF boost mode and show how it performs again in a separate video, just in case you missed it in the X50 review. Probably not everyone is interested in the 500Hz QD OLED specifically, but there are a lot of MSI monitor owners that might be interested in the EOTF boost mode, and this video will serve as a good reference for those people. MSI tell me that the EOTF boost mode will be available out of the box in four new products and presumably more moving forward. They are the 272QPX50 I already reviewed, the 272QPWX28 and 271QPX28 which are both new 280Hz 1440p models, and the 322UPE16 which is a new 4K 165Hz QD OLED. No firmware update required for those products. For the rest of MSI's lineup, they will begin rolling out firmware updates to add in the EOTF boost mode in August, though they did not confirm to me which models will get the feature. MSI are continuing to support most of their QD OLEDs via firmware updates, so if everything goes to plan, I would guess the most popular models, 321URX, 272URX, those sorts of ones, would get the update at the very least. I don't know that for sure, but there is no reason this feature cannot be included. Anyway, here's an excerpt from the 272QPX50 review that goes through how the EOTF boost feature works. MSI's new EOTF boost mode is the most interesting of the configurations. Essentially, this mode is MSI's attempt at dynamically reversing the panel dimming found in the Peak 1000 mode, creating a new mode that gives the benefits of both the True Black and Peak 1000 configurations at the same time. The goal is to preserve 1000 nits of brightness in darker scenes and correct levels of brightness in brighter scenes, without the user having to change modes like has been the case on previous QD OLED monitors. MSI's first attempt at this didn't work very well, only reversing panel dimming around 10% of the time in real scenarios. But this new EOTF boost mode is much more successful and there are genuinely times where this configuration reverses panel dimming. Across our main tests, I found great EOTF tracking at smaller window, lower APL tests while retaining 1000 nits of peak brightness. I found no panel dimming in higher APL tests like 10% APL 50 and even in our high APL mystery test. The results look very good and indicate a successful mode without panel dimming. MSI's previous attempt failed our mystery pattern test. However, in real world scenarios, the EOTF boost mode can still produce panel dimming. It's just less likely to occur than in the peak 1000 mode. Where this mode works the best is when scenes are either on the darker end of the scale or on the brighter end. In both of these situations, accuracy is good and scenes look normal without dimming. Around the transition point between low and high APL, the point at which the Peak 1000 mode begins to implement panel dimming, the EOTF boost mode has a much harder time reversing dimming, and in these border cases, we still do find some dimming is occurring. The reality is this mode from MSI is a hack. It's trying to override the panel dimming, which is still happening in the background, by brightening the image as the panel dims, instead of just removing the panel dimming. This hack is more successful in some situations than others. I was able to observe these struggles in real time in situations where a scene transitions from bright to dark or vice versa. For example, here is the dark Steam Library interface with a bright window on top in the EOTF Boost HDR mode. When the bright window is small, overall panel brightness is mid-range and normal looking. As I drag the window to become larger, brightness begins to dip up to a certain point, after which this trend reverses the other way and the panel becomes brighter. During that period before brightness increases again, panel dimming is occurring. If you do the same thing in the Peak 1000 mode, you get noticeable dimming, which remains dimmed throughout the transition between bright and dark. In the True Black 500 mode, you get more consistent brightness with a small amount of dimming at the largest window size. Where this can play out in actual gaming scenarios is when you're transitioning between a darker and brighter scene. Here in Cyberpunk, as I walk between a more shadowed area outside and a less shadowed area outside, you can see the panel dynamically changing its brightness level, almost like a camera changing its exposure. In some situations where you're constantly changing scene brightness like this, the fluctuating panel brightness can be distracting. In other situations where brightness is more consistent as you move around, the EOTF boost mode is a great way to ensure the best HDR experience is being delivered. 
Ultimately, with a few tweaks to my mystery pattern, I was able to reproduce panel dimming behavior in a test situation, so the EOTF boost mode is not the perfect solution. But so far, it's the best solution I've seen, with fewer compromises than other brightness boosting modes, which either don't work at all, or significantly over brighten dark scenes. It will take some experimentation with the game you're playing as to whether its dynamic behavior is right for that game, and I do want to be clear here, there are definitely games I played where I did not like how visible and distracting the brightness shifting is. I think a third iteration of this brightness boost algorithm could make this sort of system much more usable though. Fixing up that mid-APL transition point to further remove dimming in that zone, as well as making the algorithm a bit less sensitive so that brightness transitions are less obvious, that would make the mode more broadly usable. Alternatively, MSI could offer some sort of sensitivity setting so users could adjust how dynamic the mode is. Ultimately though, while Samsung Display continue to mandate panel dimming as part of their power management solution, which I believe is why we see panel dimming across all QD OLEDs, it will be up to manufacturers like MSI to refine their hacks to reverse it, and this latest EOTF boost mode is better, but still not quite there yet. And here's what we found from the EOTF boost mode in our real scene HDR brightness tests. The EOTF boost mode stands atop the chart with an average peak brightness of 562 nits, the highest we've seen from an OLED. This configuration is 7% brighter than the PG27 AQDP overall in our tests, largely due to higher brightness in low APL content. With that said, again, this mode can produce some panel dimming, though the level of dimming is less than the peak 1000 mode and both low and high APL accuracy is good. Just be aware of the dynamic behavior I described earlier, as that can affect your experience even if the results look good in this table. So the EOTF boost mode is certainly a better attempt at fixing panel dimming than MSI's first attempt, which didn't really work. When this feature is brought to other MSI QD OLED monitors, it's now going to be something that might be worth enabling, depending on the sort of game you're playing and your tolerance levels for the mode's dynamic behavior. So far, it's the only configuration I've tested that tackles QD OLED panel dimming in a way that is genuinely usable in some games and doesn't come with other significant trade-offs. What I like is that on the 272 QPX50, the EOTF boost mode doesn't replace the other true black and peak 1000 configurations, so if you don't like how it performs, you can just switch back to the modes you've already been using. It's purely an additional and optional feature to strengthen the performance of MSI monitors. Like I said throughout the testing portion though, this feature is ultimately a hack, and it will need more fine tuning to seamlessly reverse what appears to be power management implemented by the panel vendor Samsung Display. As W OLEDs continue to improve, a panel type that doesn't have dimming issues, QD OLED will need to evolve to get rid of this annoying problem that has occurred with every single model. For now though, that's it. If you want to see how the rest of the 272QP X50 performs, our full review is available right here on Monitor Unbox so that you can go watch that now. As always, if you want to support the testing that we do here at the channel, the Patreon page is the best way to go about that. If you sign up, you get access to cool benefits, Discord community, great place to chat about monitors. We've got the Calibrate settings for the monitors review, review and so on. So anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.